Just started with photography and want to level up? Well, it's time to get off that auto exposure and switch to manual. How and more importantly why? Keep watching. Cameras and their software are getting better and smarter by the minute these days. The brain of the camera is getting better in guessing what you want to photograph, what you intended as your subject and how to expose for it. But the camera is still a machine and a machine is not able to make artistic choices. And even if it did, it's not the camera that should be deciding on the look of your image. It's you, the person behind the camera. It's your art, not that of some programmer who wrote the software to your camera. And it's just when the light gets interesting, when there's highlights and shadows and you can really play with it, that's when the auto exposure will fail. Now, before I show you how to dial in a proper exposure, let me try and explain how the light meter works. How the camera sees the frame and decides what the exposure should be. In simple terms, the camera will turn the image into black and white. Then it will take an overall gray value of that whole frame and dials in an exposure so that that value is 18% gray. The light meter is that little indicator in your viewfinder on the bottom or on the right side on some Nikon cameras. If the little indicator is on zero or in the middle, the overall value of your image is 18% gray. By machine norms, that's a perfect exposure. If it's on the left, the image is underexposed. If it's on the right, the image is overexposed. Okay, let's put this into practice. I have a white and a black sheet right here. I'll turn the camera to auto exposure and take a shot of each sheet with the exact same lighting. Let's see what happens. Guess what? Those images are 18% grey. If I want to make the white sheet look white, I have to overexpose in comparison to what the light meter thinks. On the other hand, if I want to make the black sheet look black, I have to underexpose. So what does this mean? Well, for example, if you are in a very bright environment, let's say you are on a ski slope covered with snow in the middle of a sunny day, that's a bright scene. If the camera renders that scene to 18% grey, the image will be too dark and the snow will be that's right, 18% grey. So you'll have to overexpose. On the other side of that coin, if you are in a dark environment, it works the other way around and you will have to underexpose to what the light meter says. Because it will try to get that overall dark scene to a lighter 18% grey. Or maybe you just intended to over or underexpose the picture because of artistic reasons. Now the choice is up to you. Just remember the meter is just an indicator, it's a starting point. Okay, so how to dial in a proper exposure? The three settings we have to dial in an exposure are ISO, the sensitivity of your sensor, our f-stop or the opening of our diaphragm, and the shutter speed, essentially the time the sensor is exposed to the light. If you take a look at the light meter, you'll see those bigger marks. Every big mark represents one stop of light. Every stop of light is doubling or halving the exposure. Keep in mind that the dials on most cameras will be set to jump in thirds of a stop. For example, your shutter speed is currently set to 1 50th of a second. Your diaphragm is set to f8 and ISO is set to 200. Now you want to make that exposure a stop brighter. Well, you can lower the shutter speed. The longer it's open, the longer the sensor is exposed to the light. One stop brighter is halving the shutter speed from 1 50th of a second to 1 25th of a second. That's not a problem when you're on a tripod, but what if you're hand holding? 
Then even 1 50th of a second is very low and you risk blurry photos because of camera shake. Okay, leave the shutter speed at a 50th of a second for now. What else can we change? Or diaphragm or f-stop. This one is tricky. The numbers are backwards. Just remember that the higher the f-stop number, the less light will enter the camera, but the bigger the depth of field will be. And the lower the number, the more light will enter the camera and the smaller the depth of field will be. We're at f8 right now. One stop brighter is doubling the exposure, so we have to open up the diaphragm from f8 to f5.6. But now we have a narrower depth of field. If you want to stay at f8 because of the depth of field, well, then there's only one more thing you can do. Raise the sensitivity of the sensor. We're at ISO 200. One stop is doubling the exposure from ISO 200 to ISO 400. But we're still at a 50th of a second. A bit low for hand holding. Of course, depending on how steady a grip you have. I know guys that shoot a tech sharp image at 1 15th of a second. Personally, my limit is a 50th or 100th of a second, depending on how wild the night before was. So we want to raise the shutter speed to 100th of a second. That halves our exposure, so we have to find a way to double the exposure again. We want to keep our depth of field, so there's only one thing we can do. We have to raise the ISO from ISO 400 to ISO 800. Just keep in mind that the sensor will introduce more and more noise into the picture with every stop we increase the sensitivity of our sensor. At ISO 100 there's almost no noise. And most cameras will produce a perfectly usable image at ISO 200, 400 and even at ISO 800, depending on your camera and, and how big the sensor is, because full frame cameras handle high ISOs better than cameras with a smaller sensor. I know, if you're new to this, this seems a bit complicated. Just stick to it, keep practicing and after a while you don't even have to think about it anymore. And you'll be able to dial in an almost perfect exposure without even looking at the meter, while keeping the look of your image or artistic input in mind. And that's what you should strive for. At that moment your camera becomes a mere tool. Now you can focus 100% on your art, your vision, your photography, your story. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye.